Welcome to the AI Chat Podcast. I'm your host, Jaden Schaefer. Today on the podcast, we're talking about some news out of Anthropic, one of the number one companies when it comes to AI, and their CEO has put out a very interesting manifesto blog post, as it were, about uh, essentially the fact that he is a techno-optimist and believes in the future of AI. Now, this isn't shocking considering he's the CEO of a huge tech company, but this is a company that has spent a ton of time and money on essentially making sure that AI is safe. And it's interesting to hear his perspective on the fact uh, that he is not an AI doomer. He doesn't believe this is going to be the end of the world. We're seeing similar things out of a lot of big people in the industry. Yan LeCun recently, uh, back in May, had a big uh, blog post or Twitter thread, essentially, where he was saying that you know he, he believes um, we're at the very beginning of this AI thing and we do not need to regulate it, et cetera, et cetera. So it seems very interesting, but I want to talk about some of the things uh, Dario was saying because I think there's some really interesting insights that he has and some very interesting predictions. A lot of this is reminding me of when Elon Musk uh, kind of announced what he was going to be doing with um, with SpaceX back in the day, and a lot of people in the industry came out against him and essentially said that there's no way he's going to be able to build reusable rockets or get the price down to where he's at. Um, it's interesting because a lot of the journalists, including ones over on TechCrunch, are um, essentially skeptical of a lot of the stuff that Dario saying, some of his timeline, some of his predictions. But I'm going to say I believe, and of course, we're all going to have to wait and find out, but I'm going to say I'm more inclined to believe these predictions and these timelines um, are accurate on Dario's side. And it's probably going to be something that we look at in retrospect, similar to all these clips we see of like Elon, uh, people that were, you know, skeptical of SpaceX and what they were going to accomplish back in 2013. But now everyone's showing them because SpaceX just launched their, you know, their super big rocket um, back in back in the tower, came out of space and things like the skies of a skyscraper and it was able to land itself. And all of a sudden, everyone's like, oh, look at all these people that, that didn't believe in Elon back then, and, and now he did it. I feel like we're going to have some of the same situations in five, ten years with some of these predictions. So what are the predictions uh, and what essentially did Dario say? Broadly speaking, he's talking about a world where all of the AI risks are essentially mitigated. This is similar to Jan's vision on this, and even Sam Altman came up with a similar kind of uh, manifesto right before he was raising money. He really focuses on the fact that he believes that there's going to be unrealized prosperity, social uplift, abundance, and they're going to be able to minimize all of the downsides that AI potentially could have. So um, he doesn't specifically name any other companies, but uh, he does say that there's a lot of big steps that have been taken that he believes are moving them in this direction. So uh, Amade believes that they're going to essentially reach what he's calling quote unquote powerful AI and that they will reach it by 2026. This is a bold prediction. This isn't something he's putting out five, 10 years in the future. He's literally saying we're at the end of 2024 uh, that within a year, so you know, you wrap up this year, maybe get into 2026, a year and a half, we're gonna be there. So what does he really define when he's talking about powerful AI? What does that actually mean? He says that it is something that is quote, smarter than a Nobel prize winner. And he specifically outlines biology and engineering, um, mathematical theorems, and he says writing extremely good novels. So really something that is quite capable at uh, talking, but also reasoning is where he's kind of putting this really good AI and something like as good as a Nobel Prize winner. So this is quite you know impressive. He says that... Um, this new AI that he sees coming out by then is going to be able to control any software or hardware imaginable. So that means industrial machinery, and it's essentially going to be able to do all of the jobs that humans are doing today, but he says that it will be able to do it even better. So this is really interesting, especially when you start thinking about software, right? Like if this thing can really control your computer, for example, um, click around and do things, it, it can essentially automate all of white collar jobs. And then if it's able to integrate with all of these humanoid robots out of Tesla and other places, um, it'll essentially be able to automate, um, automate blue collar jobs as well. Um, in a very literal sense, like replacing a human, yeah, so this is very interesting. Here's a direct quote from him. He said, quote, in referring to the AI, it can engage in any action, communication, or remote operations, including taking actions on the internet, taking or giving directions to humans, ordering materials, directing payments, watching videos, making videos, and so on. It does not have a physical embodiment other than on a computer screen, but it can control existing physical tools, 
robots or laboratory equipment through a computer. In theory, it could even design robots or equipment for itself to use. Now, this is a fascinating concept. We, we talked about in the past, right, the concept of like an AI model training itself to be better and better theoretically, right, or teaching itself new things. So it's like brain is getting bigger. But imagine if it was then able to control machines that could build robots and it could all of a sudden build itself an arm or a leg or like just different, I mean, those are examples, but like it could build itself different tools or machines that could help it accomplish whatever task it was interested in accomplishing. That would be fascinating and for some terrifying. So a lot of things would have to happen for us to be able to reach that. Um, even the best AI today, a lot of people are arguing these things can't actually think. They're just predicting what words are coming next. So there's still some problems that are left to be solved. So over at TechCrunch, they believe that he is optimistic and they say very optimistic. They, they kind of call into question the article. There's an article in TechCrunch about this, calling into question the ability that he's going to be able to have to do this, which I, I, I believe it's going to happen. I say, here's my thing. Anytime you have these big leaders paint a broad um, and very ambitious vision, the first thing people are going to do is attack it and say, there's no way this vision is way too big. It's way too crazy. But you want to know what happens with people with crazy visions? They attract the top talent, the top engineers, the top scientists to come work for them. Because why would I, if I was at the top of my game, go and work for a company with a very small vision that I didn't feel like I have a big impact when there's another company has a big impact and or a big vision and they say they're going to have this big impact. If I'm the brightest mind, I'm going to go work there and they're going to be able to get the most investors, the most money. They're going to be able to compensate people the, the best. Like all the money and talent attracts into kind of the biggest vision. You see this with Elon Musk and SpaceX, you know, saying we're going to go to Mars. Okay, well, no one's even went to the moon in like forever. So like what makes you think we're going to go to another planet and reuse rockets and make, you know, a spaceship 100 times cheaper than NASA? Like that's a very big vision, but it attracted the best talent and they were able to do it because of that. Um, and so, yeah, you see very similar things. I mean, I even think of like Rivian, Tesla, a lot of these players had very big visions and they've been able to accomplish incredible things and attract incredible talent um, because of their vision. So uh, he believes that AI in the next seven to 12 years could help treat all infectious disease. Now, this is a very, some very interesting, um, very interesting things that he's, you know, speculating might be possible. He says in seven to 12 years, it could be able to eliminate most cancers cure genetic dis disorders and stop Alzheimer's in its earlier phases anyways. He thinks in the next five to 10 years, um, conditions like PTSD, depression, and schizophrenia and addiction will be cured with drugs that AI was able to essentially create, or he says genetically prevented via emb embryo screening, which obviously is a fairly controversial uh, way to go about doing this, right? Just screening embryos and then aborting all the babies that you think might have this issue or that issue. And for a million reasons, it's a very controversial topic there. Um, he thinks that all of this uh, will also quote, tune cognitive function and emotional states to get our brains to have or to behave a bit better and have a more fulfilling day to day experience. To me, that I don't like the sound of that. I don't want an AI to tune my cognitive function <laughs> and my emotional state. It seems like manipulate is what tuning it would be. But anyways, that's just me. In any case, he believes that due to all of this, um, what the impact is going to have on diseases and mental states and all this, that we're going to uh, double the human lifespan. Um, so we'll be able to live to 150 years. This is very fascinating. If you know things like Brian Johnson, what they're working on trying to make people live longer, or whatever. Um, it's very interesting with a lot of that science that's coming out too. Here's a quote from him. He said, my basic prediction is that AI enabled biology and medicines will allow us to compress the progress that human biologists would, would have achieved over the next 50 to 100 years into five to 10 years. I'll refer to this as the compressed 21st century. The idea that after powerful AI is developed, we will in a few years make all the progress in biology and medicine that we would have made in the whole 21st century. Very ambitious, but an incredible vision. This is exciting. This is something that if I was wanting to work on something, I want to get behind this vision. This is amazing. So um, TechCrunch says, quote, these seem like stretches to considering that AI hasn't radically transformed medicine yet and may not for some for quite some time or ever. So TechCrunch, skeptical of all of this. But in any case, um, Amade, he had some other ideas. He's, he went so far as to say AI could solve world hunger. He thinks that it can uh, help 
address climate change. He thinks that uh, it can transform the economies. This is very interesting. He said it'll be able to transform the economies in you know sub-Saharan Africa and their GDP, their per capita GDP, to be about the same as the per capita GDP of China right now, which is uh, China is twelve thousand seven hundred dollars in 2022 and uh, sub-Saharan Africa is $1,700. So, I mean, almost a 10x, probably seven and a half, if I'm, my mental math is, is right, seven and a half, eight x. Um, and he says that it could do that to Africa in the next five to 10 years. Very interesting. Bold predictions, bold vision. Um, personally, I think this is interesting. One thing that he did say is that he thinks this is going to, quote, require, quote, a huge effort in global health, philanthropy, and political advocacy. Um, and he thinks this is going to be in the world's best economic interest, so it's going to happen. He thinks this is going to, um, that there would be a dramatic change in human behavior, um, and so that all of this is going to kind of be embedded in there. He thinks that AI are going to be paid much lower than a minimum wage, while he says their employers are going to get tens of millions of dollars. Or maybe that's just my own prediction. Who knows? In any case, uh, something that TechCrunch likes to always bring up whenever you talk about employees and employers and AI is the fact that these AI companies are obviously raising a lot of money and doing well, um, and they hire people for below minimum wage in third party countries or in, in third world countries. Um, and they always are saying that they're paid below minimum wage, which you know, paying someone in three dollars in the Philippines is below minimum wage in America for sure, but that could be a, a great salary in the Philippines, depending on what uh, you know region of the Philippines you're from or any other country. So in any case, uh, TechCrunch likes to complain about that. That is a fact of the global economy. People make different amounts of money in different places. So I don't know. I don't think that's the, the big thing to bring up, but maybe that's just me. In any case, um, talking about some of the danger, talking about some of the that side of things. Um, he makes some interesting pr uh, predictions. He thinks that um, there's going to be a coalition of democracies, which are essentially going to secure AI's supply chain, and they're going to block anyone that's an adversary. So you can imagine, like, um, the EU and the United States and Canada and some others uh, blocking China and Russia or other political adversaries from getting the supply chain, getting, like, the NVIDIA chips and the semiconductors and all of that stuff. Um, so this is very interesting, um, and we see this sort of sort of from the United States right now blocking China from getting the most advanced chips for AI. Um, he also says that if AI is in the right hands, it could be used to, quote, undermine repressive governments. So uh, big shout out to the CIA. If you want to topple some new governments, AI sounds like this might be your tool of choice. You can go uh, undermine repressive governments. Um, I mean... In all honesty, that statement would be fantastic if you're actually undermining repressive governments. Somehow I feel like it's just going to be done wrong and we're going to go topple governments that we don't like the, you know, the, the leaders of, regardless of whatever. Yeah, whatever. You know the CIA. Classic CIA moves. Okay. And I think that's pretty non-bipartisan between uh, Republican and Democratic administrations over the last 100 years. I think that's, uh, I think it's pretty a non-partisan issue. In any case, anyone at the CIA listening, big shout out. Okay, so this, he says, is, quote, a truly mature and successful implementation of AI has the potential to reduce bias and be fair to everyone. TechCrunch says they think that AI is going to exacerbate biases. Uh, he thinks that it could fix it. It's kind of interesting because TechCrunch says it's going to exacerbate it. You need to do more to fix biases in AI. Um, these AI companies are doing stuff. Some people say they're doing too much. Some people are saying they're not doing enough. Elon Musk says that it's dangerous to add our own biases from the people training these. Um, Sam Altman and Dario think that you need to inject um, your own beliefs to, you know, drown out beliefs that are bad, uh, make these things have guardrails and behave good. So anyways, there's different, uh, different takes on that. But all of this to say, I think um, this is going to be absolutely a phenomenal time to 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 see essentially what's um, going to happen in the future. Sam Altman did a very similar thing, a very similar post when uh, he was raising, rounding, finishing up his six 
billion dollar raise. So I recommend you go check that out if you're interested. But it seems like we're coming at a place where a lot of these, a lot of people in the space are very optimistic about what's going on in um, AI, and they can see a lot of upside. Of course, there's going to be downside, I think, but I think there's going to be a ton of upside. I personally am very optimistic and very excited about this. I'll keep you up to date on everything happening in AI. Um, so if you enjoyed the episode, make sure to like and subscribe, and I hope that you have an incredible rest of your day.